power of the algorithm has brought about a data revolution. But during the golden age of Islam, Muslim scientists also used data to help make sense of the world around them. One of the most influential geographers of the Muslim world was Muhammad Al Idrisi. He was born in North Africa in 1100 and spent his early life traveling around Europe and Muslim Spain. Muhammad Al Idrisi was one in a long line of uh, Muslim geographers who wrote descriptions of the world. These are sometimes described as road books or manuals for travel. In 1138, Al-Idrisi was asked by Roger, the northern king of Sicily, to create a collection of maps using knowledge that had been gathered by merchants and explorers. It was based on descriptions from people who clearly travelled to places, not necessarily Al-Idrisi himself, although he was probably fairly well travelled. One thing it's important to remember, of course, is that Muslims knew very well the world was round all the way through this period. So when they're doing maps, they are also aware of the world as a globe. Al Idrisi spent nearly 18 years at Roger's court, compiling all the information. This was all turned into the Book of Roger, a collection of 70 maps combined with detailed notes and descriptions. When put together, the maps became a plan of the world, stretching from Spain in the west to China in the east, from Britain in the north to Africa and the Middle East in the south. The Book of Roger gave more information about people and places than any other medieval map. And this remained so for the next three centuries. Nearly 1,000 years later, Maps are still just as important, but they're being collated and delivered in a very different way. Dr. Hyatt has come to the center of San Francisco to a company at the cutting edge of mapping today. Mapbox is a tech company who make custom online maps for platforms and websites like Facebook, Lonely Planet and Snapchat. The amazing thing about El Idrisi it was he took a systematic approach to compiling various sorts of information and putting them into a map. And that map was used actually unedited for hundreds of years afterwards. He collected information. It wasn't just geographic information about what the landmass was, but it was information about the people who lived there and, and the climate and the, the practices. He was in Sicily and people were traveling back and forth and so he'd interview them and say what's going on there, what's happening, what's it like? And that would be equivalent to what we call crowdsourcing. And they were able to tie all those things into location, which is a very powerful concept that we see today. Modern cartography is very dependent on how we amass huge arrays of facts and information. The big change since uh, in the last uh, thousand years has been in the ability to collect data very, very quickly. Now we all carry around in our pocket the possibility of mapping. We all carry phones which know where we are and can send that, can trace that and send it back. For the developing world, that gives you the ability to really start to understand, diagnose and act on a lot of the, the development issues. It's very crucial to know because there is no limits, which is yeah. amazing. You make me fall in love with this type of technology.